Hello everybody, you're watching Afro Essence Television. My name is Superman Duanzira. Enjoy it. Hello everyone, welcome to Afro Essence TV. I'm joined here by the wonderful Super Manduanzila, all the way from Zimbabwe. Hello, Super. Hi, thank you very much for having me on your, on your TV channel. It's lovely to have you, considering you you're doing the same business. It's lovely to have you here. Well, we are all Zimbabweans. Yes. At the end of the day, we're trying to occupy a space that's available, and uh, the more the merrier. And I believe that uh, you know we must uh, compliment each other about what we are doing because we can never have the same content because there's a, you know, uh, uh, there's just, so uh, much, so much out there. So definitely, uh, you know, I want to support you just in the same manner that I would like you to support me. So I'm very happy to be here. I'm so happy you're here. So, Super, can you talk us through your journey in the media? I know you've started, you know, you've been in this for a very long time and you started off in radio and then you've moved on to so many other projects. Oh, well, I think in a nutshell, let me just tell you that uh, my uh, media uh, 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 engagement started in 1992 when I was working for uh, the Manika Post, which is the original newspaper owned by the stock exchange listed uh, Zim Papers. Okay. Uh, from there, I moved on to train at the Arari Polytechnic, and then I got the uh, Zim Papers Award for the best journalism student in 1994. Wow. I was automatically given a job at uh, the Herald, where I worked as a business reporter. Eventually, got myself into television, which I really loved. You know, that was uh, the passion for even when I was training as a print journalist I was more excited about uh, broadcast but I was told you know there are not many opportunities in broadcast because yes. there's only one TV channel so you better train in print journalism so at the end of the day I just uh, stayed in print but ultimately I got an opportunity to move to television and mm -hmm. I was in television since uh, December 1995 right up to now I've remained in television I've uh, worked for many TV channels, including ZBC TV, where mm -hmm. I was a business reporter, news anchor. I then worked for uh, BBC World Service Radio, where when I was uh, in, the, in the UK for some time. I uh, worked for South African Broadcasting Corporation as their Zimbabwe correspondent. I worked for Al Jazeera English Television as oh, their wow. Zimbabwe correspondent. And uh, I have um, you know, set up my own television production company, Mighty Movies, mm. where we produce documentaries, TV commercials, uh, sports, sports events, cricket, football, and for global audiences. And also, I've worked uh, uh, for various news channels, supplying uh, pictures and, and news to various international channels, including ABC in America, uh, wow. TV in New Zealand, uh, ABC in Australia, and a couple of other ad hoc clients that have come to say, oh, no, we're interested in this business story in Zimbabwe mm. or this tourism story in Zimbabwe. Long journey, but in a nutshell, I would say this is it. Wow, it sounds really, really interesting. So what are some of the hardships that you've gone through? I mean, this has been a long journey. Very long journey, you know. <laughs> It's very difficult when you're an African in an mm. African country trying mm. to do things that have never been really been done by Africans. First, you have to fight the uh, um, perceptions by our own people that you can certainly not be doing this. Definitely. If you are, it's, you're not on your own, you're doing it, you're a friend for somebody, mm. as if you have no friend to yourself, <laughs> and all that kind of uh, uh, stuff that you have to deal with. But also, you know, it's very difficult for many people to do uh, business with you at first sight because yes. they're not confident that you'll be able to produce a, a good commercial. They're worried about uh, you know soiling their own brand. They would rather go to yes. uh, uh, someone already well known. Someone already well known, and unfortunately, that someone is not uh, indigenous. <laughs> so those are some of the challenges that one has had to you know deal with. Mm. But at the end of the day, I think that we've been able to hold our own as a company, and I've been able to convince people that you know what, what. Uh, Mr. Brown can produce, I can produce better. Yes. Uh, however, you know, for you to compete with Mr. Brown, you have to be 10 times better than Mr. Brown for somebody to recognize your talent yes. or your ability. Yes. But uh, we've been able to do that, mm. and uh, I'm glad that uh, we have an, a, a, a pro pro proliferation of many young companies that mm. are run by our own people, that yes. produce TV commercials, documentaries, drama, and that's the kind of growth and development that you want. So, lots of problems. But we don't like to concentrate on problems. We want to concentrate on, on the, the opportunities. Solutions. <laughs> there have been a lot of solutions. That's why we're here today and that's yes. why we're talking right now. Yes. Mm. For someone like you to come from Zimbabwe, to work on such a high pedestal, to work for Al Jazeera, I mean, those are some of the dreams that, you know, aspiring journalists have when they're sleeping. And most of them die without even seeing them. How did that feel for you? Did you feel fulfilled? I mean... You know, at the end of the day, you know, let me be honest with you. This thing is the... Whatever you achieve in life is 
it's really out of what you dream. Mm. It's out of what you you're passionate about and you always look forward to. Yes. I can tell you right when I was at the Polytechnic when I was training as a, as a journalist, mm. my dream was to be Larry King on CNN, <laughs> to be to replace Larry King. Oh yeah. Oh, I had this ambition to work for a global channel. Mm. I had this ambition to make my name leave a mark across the globe. Definitely. And I worked towards that goal. Mm. And I set a goal and I worked towards it. Mm. And, and for young journalists who are coming up right now, the, the way to work for Financial Times, the way to work for the biggest paper in Zimbabwe, the way to work for the biggest paper in America or television or radio is to say that is your target. Then yes. you can find your way around. But if you have no target and you don't know where you're going, mm. you can just take any direction. So mm. you never get to where you want to go because you don't even know where you want to go. Mm. So I made uh, it very clear in my mind that I wanted to work for a global channel and I wanted to dominate in that global space and I wanted to be known that the Superman Duanzira comes from Zimbabwe and he's a journalist. And I walked that road. Mm. And if believe it or not, I didn't look for a job at Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera looked for me. That's great. They, they gave me a call and said, no, we're in the process of setting up this station. We want to come and talk to you. They came in. They saw my stuff. They saw one of my uh, journalists, Harum Tasa. She was okay. working for me at Mighty Movies. Yes. They said, we want to hire one of your persons. Hmm. I said, by all means, because that's one of my ambitions to work for a global channel. And if one of my employees, somebody I picked up from uh, Jobek, who was working for some magazine, I said, you're wasting your talent. You do well on TV. Yes. And I, I brought her to work for me at Mighty Movies. They said they wanted her to hire. I said, go ahead and hire. Hmm. They hired one of my camera persons who... I brought up as a driver in my company, worked up his way, and he was now a cameraman for Mighty Movies. Today, he is the cameraman for Al Jazeera Films in uh, uh, DRC, films for Al Jazeera in Sudan, wow. in South Africa. He was my driver at Mighty Movies. And I'm so <laughs> proud of this story. Yeah. Because we got people who could have never been anywhere in their lives, and we, 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 we created now. opportunities for them. Yeah. So when they eventually said, you know what? Our plan for Zimbabwe has not worked. We think you, we want you to work for us. Uh, and this is the deal. I said, I'm happy, yes. ready to go. A lot of people, aspiring journalists, may think you got to where you were, where you are now, you know, as one of the biggest names in media in Zimbabwe. You got there because you had probably the right connections. Because everybody in Zimbabwe and even around the world thinks about the right connections. Do I need to have the right connections? And a lot of people, when they see this interview, they're going to say, hi, you just got where he got because he had the right connections. And, you know, so can you just tell our viewers exactly, you know, the steps that you took? So okay. that people understand well, that it's not uh, just uh, about that. Uh, thank you very much for that question because I think it's very important for people to understand and know that there's absolutely nothing wrong for me to know somebody. <laughs> there's absolutely nothing wrong. It's not a crime to know people of influence. Definitely. In fact, if you want to be successful in business, you've got to create relations with people of influence. There's you something called know. public relations. Yeah, you, you <laughs> must know people who have power. If yes. you know people who have no power, you're useless and they're useless. <laughs> but if you want to know people who move and shake things mm. and you will be successful in business so i don't apologize for the relations that i have mm. i'm very happy to have those relations <laughs> yes and secondly i don't make it because i have relations if mm. you are mediocre and you have relations you never get anywhere true okay there are many people who are very close to very people of influence but they are nowhere, nowhere in life okay you have to have the passion you have to work very hard and you have to give somebody who is saying giving you a chance the uh, uh, the comfort to say, I know if I work with Miss Chiangwa, yes. she will produce the good results, yes. and you produce the results. Yes, I definitely. know many people who are related to the president mm. who are not making it in life. Definitely. I know many people who are related to stock exchange chief executives who have never made it in business. Mm. But I know many people who know people who are doing very well. So mm. it's a combination of who you know and what you know. So I know people, it's an advantage for me. I know things. Mm. And I like to do things. That's another advantage for me. So people must uh, have this uh, appreciation that whether you're in the United States, mm. in Japan, yes. in Shanghai, in China, in, <laughs> in the UK, Timbuktu. in Timbuktu, it's who you know. Yes. It's never about what you know. Yes. What you know comes later. Yes. So I'm, I'm in that privileged position that I know people, and I don't know people because they're related to me. I know people because I worked in the media, yes. I worked as a journalist, and in that way, I created relations. You meet relations. people, definitely. So you mentioned um, your driver who used to work for you, who's now a cameraman. For Al Jazeera? Yes. yes. So what about someone who's watching this interview who is aspiring to be, you know, big 
and they want to come to you because now you are a big man <laughs> and it's not easy to get Superman Wanzara's attention. Yeah, I, you know, <laughs> you know I, I meet all, all lots of people and uh, you know, they want to talk to me. I try by all means to talk to everybody or at least to respond to everybody who wants to talk to me because I was there before. Yes. I know what it means to get a response from somebody you are looking up to. Mm. I know what it means to be told something to do by somebody you, 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 you pretty much admire. Mm. It means a lot. Yes. And, and you know, to just respond to an email from somebody or a Facebook po a, a message from somebody to say, well, I think you got a brilliant idea. I think you should try this and that. For me, uh, it's it's giving a lot. Mm. So I, I try very hard in the time, the short time that I have in a day mm. to, to do that. Mm. Uh, at the end of the day, I cannot be able to reach out to everybody. Yes. At the end, what is critical is that for people uh, to, to be able to understand what it is that they want to achieve, how to achieve it, and then move on. Okay. But, the advice I give to people, to young journalists out there who want to achieve something, knowing me may not create the right value that you want to create, yes. but knowing what you want mm -hmm. may be the most important thing that you want to, you must do. Know what you want and work towards it. Definitely. You will get there. Yes. You know what my ambition is right now? Yes. My ambition is to build a, a media empire in Zimbabwe that will grow into a global media empire. Yes. My ambition is to demonstrate the success of black Zimbabwean, the Zimbabweans in their own country and outside their own country yes. and I'm getting there. I'm glad you touched about Zimbabweans also outside the country because there are a lot of Zimbabweans that have come out of Zimbabwe right now and like now you are in England and there's us guys what are you doing to try and make us known in Zimbabwe? Because we want our stuff also to get home. But I'm sorry, I don't have to do anything for you. You have to do it for yourself. Yeah, but, but you, are you willing to help? But, <laughs> but let me also put, say, say this again. I believe that Zimbabweans in the diaspora are a big, big market and a big opportunity for, the, for our country. Mm. Number one, if I were in government, Mm. I would create a ministry for the diaspora. Mm. I would have a minister who's in charge of the diaspora, mm. who looks after the interests of the diaspora, who yes. looks at how to harness the interests of the diaspora, the benefits we can get from the diaspora, and channel them to our country without difficulties that those in the diaspora face, mm. without losing money when they want to do property development, without Definitely. losing money when they want to do ins insurance, mm. without losing money when they want to send their money, uh, money to their parents in Zimbabwe. I would create that ministry as this point of, uh, of helping. However, mm. I'm not in the government and I'm not uh, about to be in government, I'm in the media. What am I going to do? We want, thankfully, we want a radio license, which is national, but yes. we are going to make sure that it's also available online. And we're going to address Zimbabweans in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. We're going to provide them with information that they look for. Yes. They look for entrepreneurial information. Mm -hmm. They look for information where to get that service, this service, and that service. Mm -hmm. We're going to be providing that on our channel, and that is what we're going to do to give back to Zimbabweans who are in the diaspora, who are a very important component of our own people. So what you're doing on your radio station is more consulting rather than... Uh, it being a media, are you going to no, be showing we, we, talent as well? We are going to be producing programs that address the needs of people in the diaspora. And we hope the diaspora will be listening via internet. Yes. But we are also going to, we are giving an opportunity to those that want to come back to Zimbabwe to work mm. with us. Mm. We have, you know, we're creating a new company. Yes. And uh, we will need engineers, we will need presenters, we will need editors. So we are creating employment. <laughs> we're creating employment for those in Zimbabwe and outside Zimbabwe. Anyone yes. is, is free to join us as long as they've got the talent and the skills. Okay, so can you just explain exactly what you're doing to our viewers so that they know exactly what you're doing at this very moment? At this very moment, we're setting up a radio station. I'm just coming in from the United States, where I was attending the National Association of Broadcasters uh, uh, conference and, uh, and exhibition. Uh, we've just secured uh, uh, equipment, uh, okay. uh, finalized our negotiations with our suppliers out of Italy, and uh, we're now um, in the process of doing the, the, the money transfer so that they can start the process of manufacturing. Okay. So we hope that when that is done, they will ship the equipment to Zimbabwe. But in the meantime, mm. we are recruiting presenters, mm. we are recruiting editors, we are recruiting engineers, we are recruiting uh, our support staff for our radio station. So we have uh, opportunities across the field for anybody who is interested to join us. Okay, so there are a lot of people that are based in the diaspora who, not, who don't necessarily want to come back home for the fear of the unknown but they would want to work with you or for you. Is there any opportunities for people that are not in Zimbabwe to work with you or for you? Okay, let me just say for those Zimbabweans who want to work with me and or with other organizations in Zimbabwe, but they are afraid for fears of the unknown, there's nothing unknown to fear. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm in Zimbabwe, I work in Zimbabwe, and I see what's happening on a daily basis. Yes. In fact, the opportunities that the Zimbabweans should be getting are being taken up by the Chinese. Mm. They're being taken up by Nigerians. They're mm. being taken up by Pakistanis. They're being taken up by South Africans, by the English, by the
the Americans because Zimbabweans are fearing the unknown. <laughs> so I'm saying there's nothing to fear. That's point number one. Point number two, yes, programming, we will take it in. Uh, for those that are producing it from the diaspora, certainly we will look at uh, advertising uh, 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 representatives in various markets because we're going online. Yes. We believe that there are people who want to sell their products to Zimbabweans. Yes. So we want agents who can be collecting advertising from those markets that are in the diaspora. So we have a whole lot of other opportunities for those that are not willing to come to Zimbabwe at this point. Okay, so we've been talking a lot about entrepreneurship um, in media, basically, like, we've been focusing on that. But you've had the opportunity to interview some of the greatest businessmen in the world. I mean, what sort of advice would you give to the people about entrepreneurship, businessmen, whatever business it is, especially for Zimbabweans in Zimbabwe right now, what are the opportunities that are available to the people right now? There are three things that people must know about entrepreneurship and mm. that make them successful. Yes. First thing is passion. Mm. The second thing is passion. The third thing is passion. passion. <laughs> you have to be passionate about that business that you want to do. Dream it. Mm. Live it. Mm. Be, make it. It must be something that excites you. Mm. That you don't sleep when you start thinking about it and you start getting into it. Mm. And it's something that uh, uh, your wife, your, your, your boyfriend, your girlfriend must say, please just stop and go to bed. Stop mm. and go to bed. Stop it. Because <laughs> you're so passionate about it. You want it to succeed. You build dreams. You build castles about it this project when you're sleeping. That's what you've got to know about business. Mm. There's nothing, there's no formula beyond that. True. You have to do what you love. Okay. But you have to love people because <laughs> people are always your market. Yes, definitely. So what are the final words that you can say to us people in the diaspora in England, you know, in all over the world because our channel is online so everyone all over Here's the world my very very simple message yes the economic freedom train is taking off in zimbabwe yes be on that train mm. it's not going to reverse and because trains don't reverse yes be on that train because if you're not on that train you miss it completely and that's forever mm. this time is the second homecoming is mm. the second independence this is the second 1980 for zimbabwe mm. 1980 a lot of our people are Parents bought houses for five thousand dollars to ten thousand Zimbabwe dollars because all white people were packing their bags and running away and say there is a black government coming in, we're not gonna be safe. Mm. So property prices were very depressed, they were cheap. Yes. Now everybody's saying, Oh, here we go again, another land reform, they're taking over companies and mines, they're going to run them down. We are running away. Mm. That's an opportunity for Zimbabweans to come and claim their heritage and take a stake. If you don't take a stake, sorry, that's it, you're finished. Mm. Because what's happening is that whether they like it or not, international investors will have to come to Zimbabwe. Mm. There's nowhere else in the world where they will go and find the largest resource of platinum in the world except in Zimbabwe. Yes. Of course, we have the second known reserves of platinum in the world after South Africa. Yes. And I'm saying we probably have the largest if we consider what is not Unknown. yet known. <laughs> we consider what is not yet known. Yes. So forget about the nonsense that, oh, no investors will go elsewhere. There is nowhere else to go where there's those uh, platinum reserves. They're yes. only in Zimbabwe. Yes. So they will always come back. Yes. But it, I want investors to come back when those resources are in your hands mm. and they will have to negotiate with you. And that is the opportunity that is available to Zimbabweans in Zimbabwe and Zimbabweans in the diaspora. Mm. Forget about listening to the media mm. about, oh, Zimbabwe is a bad investment area. Zimbabwe is bad. The day they say Zimbabwe is bad, consider it is another advantage for you. You have another opportunity to claim your stake, mm. to position yourself very well. And mm. that's what I do. So we're going to rename you as Superman Wanzira, the motivational speaker. <laughs> because you've been speaking a lot of motivation no, no, to the Zimbabwe. Th thank you very much. Thank I take you that for as coming. A I take that as a compliment. But yes. I'm really passionate about my country. I'm really passionate about my people, uh, my fellow countrymen and countrywomen to understand that there are real opportunities in Zimbabwe. Yes. And I, and I I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, when people talk about politics, throw politics in, I get really you know depressed because they don't know what they're missing by throwing politics into this. They set barriers for themselves. They put, they're putting barriers for yourself. You know, yeah. we're not going to go back until things change. Change for who? Yeah. Go and get opportunities. Mm. Or oh, they say, oh no, Mr. Mugabe is still in power, so it's going to be difficult to go back to Zimbabwe. He's the dictator. Oh, who on earth should be so afraid of Mr. Mugabe's rule than Morgan Changira? True. <laughs> and is working Ooh, right next and, he, and they're drinking coffee every day together. Yes. And they're doing things together, positive for our country. And yeah. you think you are sitting in Australia, you must have this argument that, oh no, it's not safe. Why is it safe for Morgan Changre? Mm. 
<laughs> and why, why do you think it will be unsafe for you? Yes, definitely. You miss opportunities for thinking politics. Politics must trail business. Yeah. So people must think business and run with business. Politics will adjust itself to suit business. Definitely. It's been lovely having you here on Afro Essence TV. I'm very happy because we are doing something um, similar to what you're doing and we're still young but we're growing and you've really motivated us and inspired us on Afro Essence TV. We are very happy to have you. Thank you so much, Superman Wanza. I want to thank you very much for having me on Afro Essence TV and I want to wish you all the best on this channel. You're doing wonderful things and I think that uh, this is the birth of great talent. This is the birth of great things. Every idea started small and it will grow. And what you're doing is great because you've started something, it is happening, people can see the results. It can only grow. I want to congratulate you and thank you for having me. I thank really you so much. It.